Grace and peace be yours in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Then Jesus said to his disciples, therefore I tell you, don't worry. Don't worry about your life, what you're going to eat. Don't worry about your body, what you're going to wear. Don't worry. Is that message simple enough? Anybody have trouble understanding it? Don't worry. It's not hard to understand what makes it hard. It's hard to do it. Who here is really good at worrying? Right? That comes naturally to us. So, so what are we worried about as people of God? If God loves us and blesses us, what are we worried about? Well, we're worried about job security these days. We're worried about paying the bills. We're worried that our kids turn out okay. Mom and dad, right? We're worried about our health. We're worried about our loved ones. We're worried about the direction our nation is headed. Are we worried about that? Should be. Or not. (laughs) Now here's the question, are those things real? They are. The bills are real. Our health and well-being is real. Who remembers three years ago we never worried about pandemics? It was nice. Forty years ago we probably weren't worried about where the nation was headed. We probably should have been. In Luke chapter 12, Jesus says, don't worry. I want to catch this. Jesus is not being sappy. He's not saying, don't worry, be happy. Uh, Jesus is not saying, turn your frown upside down. It's not just a motto. The, the, the words of the Lord are always based on a foundation. It's got to be based on some biblical truths, uh, something that's concrete and something that we can hold on to, and we're going to get there in a moment. But I just want to hear that it's very challenging when the Lord says, don't worry, and I know that I worry. Now, Jesus raises... A very fundamental point, and we need to hear it, Luke 12, 25. It's just as direct and almost humorous as it can be. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? It's a fair question. Who of us here, we have something that we're facing, and we're going to invest lots of emotional energy, lots of worry. We're going to cogitate on it over and over again. Who of us, by worrying, can add a single hour to our life? And in fact, what's he implying? It's, it's the other way around. What happens when you worry? You're actually taking time off your life, right? So he says this, if by worrying you can't lengthen your life, you can't even do that little thing, that's his words, you can't even do that one very little thing, then why are you worried about the rest? No. In the text here, it says, uh, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't be anxious, don't be afraid. I want us to catch something. Jesus uses three different words. I want to look at them, three different words in the Greek. The first one is marimnao. You don't have to memorize the words. I just want you to know that I did my homework. Uh, Marimnao, uh, which can, like many words, have a good sense or a bad sense. The good sense of marimnao is to have concern about something. The bad sense is when it trips over from concern into anxiety. You see the difference, right? How do you know which is being used? Well, context. Here's some passages. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 25. That's a wonderful chapter of the Bible. He says the whole uh, church is like a body and it's many different members. That wonderful passage. 1 Corinthians 12, 25. Have concern for each other. Have merim not. What's he, he's talking about good sense or bad sense? Good sense, right? Have concern for one another. Philippians 4, 6 says don't be anxious about anything you see how that's a negative thing Uh, don't be anxious about anything luke chapter 12 verse 22 uh marimnao is used in 22 25 26 don't worry about your life or your body is that a positive or negative sense that's the negative right don't worry verse 25 who by worrying can add a single hour negative sense verse 26 since you can't why do you worry about the rest negative sense you see what he's uh, doing so uh, don't worry don't have anxiety don't get all twisted around about that the second one he uses though a very different word meteoridzo 
meteor ridzo. Why do you want to know that word? Um, the word, the English word that comes from that is meteor. Meteor. In Greek, it literally means to rise up, but it means in a bad way. What does a meteor do? It flies off on a tangent. You see what he's saying? Don't meteorizo. Who here has everything, it's, everything's going fine, good week, good day, sun is shining, things are going well, and a piece of bad news comes, what are you tempted to do? To fly off, right? To shoot off like a meteor does. Don't run off on a tangent. He says, you ever do that? Something strikes us, and we're flying off on a tangent. He says, don't meteorizo. Third word he uses is phobeo, phobeo. Um, you won't be surprised to know the English word that comes from that is phobia. Phobia. Don't have a fear. Uh, the word phobia is used in the New Testament 93 times, most often in the same short little phrase. What is it? Fear not. Fear not. Now, hear those words. Don't have anxiety. Don't go off on a tangent. Don't be afraid. Does Jesus know how we are? Again, he's not saying this in a silly way. The question for us, is there a basis for the Lord to say to me not to worry? I want to get there, but as we do, I want to say a couple more things about us as a congregation. Here's some fun stuff to know. This building is on a septic system and the city of Irmo has just notified us we have to tie in to city sewer. Now, we could either go that direction or that direction. If we go that direction, it'll be affordable, and if we go that direction, it'll be very expensive. Not our decision. The city will let us know, should we be worried about that? You see the point? Is that real? Yes. Yeah. So here's some more news for you. Our roof is going to need some work. Maybe not this year, maybe not next year, but it is coming. How big is our roof? Church, administrative wing, educational wing, how much roof do we have? We have a call committee looking for an associate pastor. That's a good thing, but what's he going to be like? How will he serve us? What are his gifts and talents? Will we like him? We have a space utilization committee. They are improving our Sunday school rooms. That's good. They're going to build out that choir loft. That'll involve our sanctuary. We might, we're talking about, we'd love to add a new building outside. Are you worried yet? You see? I've had several people say to me, Pastor Walt, these are great things, but how are we going to get it done? And what does the Lord say to this? Don't worry. Don't worry going to be all right okay don't worry now why not here they are real quick first thing these are all simple points i just want to make sure that we have them in mind here's the first one you matter to god right we're not trying to be sappy just be happy it'll make you feel better no you matter to god jesus says consider the ravens they don't sow or reap they don't plant, they don't have storerooms, God feeds them. Is that right? God is saying to us, I want us to be really clear about this. You, when I say you matter to God, you are a special creation of God. You are not, and this has to be clear, you are not a matter of a cosmic accident. That is why... The other worldview is so wrong. We just happen. You are not a matter of a cosmic accident. You're God's special creation. God made you. He watches over you. Will he care for you? Yes. Consider the ravens. Consider the plants, the flowers out in the field. They don't toil. They don't labor. I love the passage where it says, consider the ravens. Not every day of the week, but most days of the week, Renee and I go out for a walk in the morning. Across the street from our house is a wooded area. And about the exact same time that we go out for our walk, 
all the crows start waking up. And I don't, how many crows are there? I don't even know. It's crazy how many. And they start getting up and they wake up and they all fly east. What are they going to do? They go to do their crow things. I don't even know what that is. But every morning we get up and we go for a walk. They get up and they fly off to work. At the end of the night, we're sitting out on the porch and they're all flying back. Has the Lord provided for them? Will he provide for you? You matter to God. By the way, I always think it's slightly funny when Jesus says, you matter more to God than birds. I think, well, thanks, Lord. <laughs> it's a funny phrase. But he's saying that God takes care of the, the, the flowers in the field. God takes care of the birds. God created you. He sustains the creation. He esteems the creation. He esteems and values you. That's one of the bases. The second thing he says is this. You belong. You belong. Verse 32, do not be afraid, little flock. That's a beautiful phrase. I, I, it's easy to run by it. I don't want us to miss it. That's a beautiful phrase. Do not be afraid who? Little flock. You matter to the Lord, but you belong. I think the, the human psyche has this natural question. I'm not sure why we do it, uh, but we have this natural thought, do I fit in? Right? We look around at all the other people, their lives seem like they're going okay, and we wonder, do I fit in? What's the answer to that? In Christ, you belong. God made you. Christ has redeemed you. The Lord is the Savior. He gave himself up for you. He's called you to be here. He's called you to fit in. And it's such a consistent message of Scripture. Jesus says it over and over. Little flock, hear these words. The good shepherd knows his sheep, right? The good shepherd knows his sheep by their name. The good shepherd calls the sheep and they listen to him. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. You belong to the Lord. That's good. You do fit in. You're welcome here. This is the business of the church is to let people know they have the acceptance of God. You're part of God's people. And the third thing is this. You have a great inheritance. You matter to God, you belong. You have a great inheritance. Don't be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the what? Your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. The kingdom of God. His reign, his rule, his glory, his power, the beauty and the wonder of heaven. It belongs to you. God has said this is for you. Christ says, when I go, I'll come back to take you to the place that I am. You notice that he says that God has given you the kingdom and the next thing he starts to talk about is generosity. He says, sell the stuff that you have and give it away. Give to the poor. Help other people. Do you know what he's saying? He's saying you own so much out from that should flow a generous heart. God has given you the kingdom. There's that heavenly perspective. The kingdom is yours. Your son and a daughter of God. It, it, if you think about last week's text, remember that the gospel lesson started with this man saying to Jesus, teacher, make my brother divide the inheritance with me. You see the parallel? Jesus says, the father has given you the kingdom. How much do you own? The kingdom of God is yours. You see how trivial it is? This guy was saying, Jesus, make my brother divide the inheritance. Jesus is looking at it like, what a small thing occupies the human mind. In heaven, your inheritance, it's secure. Jesus says, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. That's ours. So don't worry. And that's what he's saying. Don't worry. Why? You matter to God. You belong to his flock and the kingdom is yours. Should we worry? Do we have lots of stuff going on? 
Yeah, I want us to catch this. Jesus says that the ravens don't sow or reap. He wasn't saying to us, do nothing. He wasn't saying we don't sow or reap. He's saying we should be about the things that he puts before us, but not to worry about it. You see what he's saying? The birds don't sow or reap, but you do. <laughs> the flowers don't toil or spin, but you do. It's okay to work. We're supposed to work. We're supposed to do his business. We're supposed to be about the things that are before us. So here's the question. What is before us this week? Do you see where that goes? The text is, don't worry. So think about this. What do I have coming up this week? What's on my calendar this week? And how am I going to deal with it? Should I worry about it? Church, <laughs> should I worry about it? No. We're just going to face it, right? We're going to face it in the Lord, knowing that we belong to him, we are redeemed by him, we are his, and we have a wonderful inheritance. Amen. And we stand together. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and our minds with Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.